So good morning, everyone. It's a pretty daunting uh, forum, to be honest. Um, but uh, I, I just want to... Uh, the central theme of this, this conference is landscapes. And it's something that we've been working on at C4 with our partners for many years. And as a, as a researcher working on forestry issues at the landscape scale, one of the things I'm always asked is, what is the landscape approach? What are landscapes? What size does a landscape have to be? Is it bounded by geography? Is it bounded by politics? And given that landscape approaches have been in the sort of development parlance for the last 25 years, it's very hard to appreciate that we're still asking those questions. But actually, at the same time, it's also incredibly indicative of how complex the landscape theme is. The, the term landscape itself is incredibly evocative. We have um, the fields of art, philosophy, politics, the political landscape, have adopted the term landscape in many different ways. And often the um, term doesn't transfer between any of those disciplines. So it's a term that's been used um, across many disciplines and over time has become synonymous with a broad sweeping uh, set of statements. And if you think about the term landscapes, how much is going to be used here? What's the meaning of the term landscape? What do we mean by landscapes? And I think that's the essence of some of the conundrums that we've had in terms of real integration at the landscape scale and looking at sustainable landscapes from a more holistic perspective. At C4, we've tried to sort of make sense of the order of the chaos of landscapes in a way. And a few years ago, we developed what's called the 10 principles of a landscape approach. They were in working terms known as our 10 commandments. And these resonated very well with the donor community, with the practitioner community. They've been widely cited and used in project implementation in countries such as Indonesia. And it was an attempt to provide order, a sort of a, a framework and concept of the chaos of, of landscape approaches. But fundamentally, landscape approaches are almost without order. The, the chaos, if you like, um, are, is very much uh, palpable in terms of understanding how landscape approaches have evolved over time. And a good analogy is sort of improvisational jazz, which is not an easy thing to say when you're nervous. Um, improvisational jazz is essentially uh, an agreement between diverse mu musicians who can understand the starting point and the end point of a musical piece, but the journey to get there is very different. So it's a very um, concept, com uh, complex concept in terms of understanding how to get from A to B, but basically making sure that at the end there's a consensus of approach and consensus of agreement. I'm going to have to glass, have a glass of water here. Excuse me. That's better. So the landscape approach has really evolved from the, 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 the sort of integration of, of land uses into a much more formalized approach from the policy perspective. Um, and here we are in the Global Landscapes Forum, where everything is high level, high profile, policy, we've got ministers, we have very high level people here talking about landscapes. But what does it mean on the ground? Fundamentally, one of the pieces of work that we've done and I'm most proud of is looking at how sustainable landscapes are represented in the literature. What can we learn from the implementation of sustainable landscape approaches? And one of the things we've found is that in the scientific literature, there's almost no evidence of sustainable la landscape practice on the ground. It doesn't mean they don't happen. It just means that it's not, not being reported in the, in the literature, and this is a, a huge issue. But I firmly believe that there are two billion, well, there are, not whether I believe it or not, there are two billion small-scale farmers working in complex landscape mosaics. They manage these landscapes in their entirety. They don't look through the prism of a single land use. They think about landscapes as a whole. They manage as a whole, and they manage much more in an integrated fashion in these types of land systems than we actually appreciate. So the lofty goals of the Global Landscapes Forum to reach a billion people, well, think about that. That's, fairly, that's a fairly hubristic approach in many ways. But there are two billion people already working at the landscape scale. 
maybe this is our constituency, maybe this is our, our um, target group that we need to work with in the future. To end, this is the landscape I grew up in, southern England, the South Downs. It's a complex landscape that's been evolving over the last hundreds and thousands of years based on social, political, and environmental criteria. And that complicated aspect of landscapes is why it's such a challenge to do these things on the ground. To understand landscapes, we need to move beyond, it's great to hear about moving beyond the project cycle, moving beyond short-termism, moving beyond um, uh, the, the project cycle, if you like, and investing time and experience and working with those on the ground, the bottom-up experience, to actually inform uh, the landscape approach. And essentially, I think the Global Landscapes Forum can play a role in switching up from the top down to the bottom up, and that's where we move from theory to practice. Thank you.